Welcome to another Pastor Spotter. I'm Pastor Rick Manon, and uh, we are here today to continue to talk about the pre-tribulation rapture. And I recently heard somebody that called this doctrine a doctrine from hell and gave no scripture verses whatsoever for their position. And I'm just trying to give you scripture verses. And so at least when you um, say that you believe in the pre-trib rapture, there is some, some evidence, there's a lot of support for it, and you're not just believing in it as some kind of rescue operation or escapism from tribulation. So I've been pounding a lot of points into your, into your head about this, and some of these that I'm trying to talk about are things that perhaps you hadn't heard before. And so today I want to talk again on Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. And what is the meaning of the word hour? there where Jesus said, Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing, that hour which is to come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Now the Greek word for hour there is aura, and in John's writing, an hour does not refer to a literal 60 minutes. The way John uses the word typically is it's referring to an age, an extended period of time. For example, Jesus in John chapter 12 and verse 27, we hear him saying, Father, keep me from this hour. He's not talking about 60 minutes. What he's talking about is the ordeal of experiencing the wrath of God during the crucifixion. And you'll notice that what Jesus says to the church at Philadelphia is we're going to be kept out of it not just the hour or a hour, but the hour, the hour. You see the definite article there in front of hour. So John and Christ must be referring to something that is very well known in biblical history. The hour obviously refers to something that's very concrete in the minds of these believing Christians. And the only explanation we would have for the hour is the tribulation period itself because the tribulation period has been well defined. It's been defined in the pages of the Old Testament and Jesus spoke openly about this time period in Matthew chapter 24 verses 15 through 22. So because he uses hour and extended age and the definite article in front of the word hour He's referring to something already well-defined, which I believe is the tribulation period. Now, I want you to watch this very carefully, because the argument that is being made today is that this hour, the wrath of God, doesn't start until later. Those in the mid-trib view say the wrath of God doesn't start until the second half, three-quarter rapturous say the wrath of God doesn't start until the final 25%. We believe that the whole thing, the whole tribulation, is the wrath of God. And I'll be showing you very carefully as we move through the book of Revelation why this is so. So a lot of people are out there saying, you better hunker down, you better get some ammo. And by the way, having a gun is not a bad thing to have. I'm not against that at all. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in preparing uh, my home because we live in a fallen world. I just don't do it because of my eschatological position. I don't do it because I think I'm going to come eyeball to eyeball with the Antichrist one day. And so much of the body of Christ is living on the edge because they have an improper doctrine and they think they're going to see the Antichrist face to face. So I've got to get all these copper bullets and all of these things that they sell on the internet. So I am well prepared for that. And by the way, there are people out there, I'll give you one name, Alex Jones. And, his, and, and I don't want to call it a ministry, it's his platform called Infowars.com. And I think he's right in a lot of things that he talks about. I agree with him. There is coming a one world government on planet Earth. But if you listen to him long enough, 
he'll start bashing the pre-trib rapture, attacking it over and over again. And you have to ask yourself, why does he keep attacking the pre-trib rapture over and over again? And here's the answer. He sells survival gear. So pre-tribulationism would damage his sales. I think it's as simple as that. Always follow the money, as the saying goes. But what is being spoken of here by Jesus? Let's pretend that the wrath of God doesn't start until the final 25% or the final 50% of the tribulation period. Did you catch the statement that Jesus made here? He doesn't promise us we're going to be kept from the wrath. He promises us that we're going to be kept out of the time when the wrath is poured out. The promise is you're going to be here uh, for most of it, but not the wrath. The promise is exempted. No, that's not true. We are kept from the hour, from the whole hour of this time period. Charles Ryrie puts it this way. However, the promise of Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 not only guarantees being kept from the trials of the tribulation period, but being kept from the time period of the tribulation. The promise is not, I will keep you from the trials. It is, I will keep you from the hour of the trials. But how clear and how plain is the promise? I will keep you from the hour of testing. Not just from any persecution, but from the coming time that will affect the whole earth. The only way to escape worldwide trouble is not to be on the earth. Charles Ryrie says the only way to escape worldwide trouble is not to be on the earth, and not just from the events, but from the time. And the only way to escape the time when the events take place is not to be in a place where time ticks on. That's why we can't be on the earth during this time, because there's time on the earth. We have clocks and watches. We have to be transferred into a place that's timeless, heaven. So he says the only place that meets those qualifications is heaven. And uh, he says that in what you should know about the rapture, current Christian issues, um, published in Chicago at Moody in, way back in 1981. And you will say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. I've been listening to your teachings on Israel and the kingdom, and you keep talking about how the nation of Israel is going to go through this time period. In fact, here's Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. Now this is what's called the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, and it uses the same words, relatively the same words that we find in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. It says, Alas, for that day is great, there is none like it, and it is the time of Jacob's distress. By the way, who is Jacob in the Bible? Well, that's Israel. But he will be saved, sozo, from apo, it. Now here it's not ek, but it's a po, a very similar preposition, sozo and apo. Sounds like a computer company, doesn't it? And the people say, well, you're telling us that the church is going to be removed from this time period, but now you're telling me that nearly the same construction that's used in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7, that Israel is going to go through this time period. And the answer to that is, you have to understand the distinction between Israel and the church. If you do not keep Israel and the church separate as separate programs of God, you're going to be confused about this until your dying day. Israel's program is to go into this time period in unbelief so that a remnant can be brought to faith. In fact, Zechariah chapter 13 verses 8 through 9 is very clear that it's a third of the nation that will be part of that remnant. Zechariah 13 verses 8 and 9, It will come about in all the land, declares the Lord, that two parts in it will be cut off and perish, 
but the third will be left in it. And I will bring the third part through the fire, refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say they are my people, and they will say, The Lord is my God. So they're going from unbelief to belief through the mechanism of the tribulation period. But let me ask you something. Can you be a Christian and not be in the faith? It's impossible. It's possible to go to church and not be saved. But what I'm talking about here is being a believer in Christ. You've already been identified to the body of Christ. You cannot even be in that position unless you've already believed. So there is no agenda to take the church from unbelief to belief through the mechanism of the tribulation period. But there is that mechanism in place for the nation of Israel. Today within the nation of Israel, it's an unbelieving nation. Keep Israel and the church separate because they are on different designed programs and to mix the two together is to mix apples and oranges. So that is the fourth reason I believe and why I believe in the pre-trib rapture. So God bless you. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.